Oh, Polly, pretty Polly, come go along with me. Oh, Polly, pretty Polly, come go along with me. Off to the hills and valleys deep. She saddled up behind him, and away they did ride. She saddled up behind him, and away they did ride. Into the hills and valleys wide. Oh, Willie, oh, Willie, I'm afraid of your ways. Oh, Willie, oh, Willie, I'm afraid of your ways. Afraid you will murder me and leave me astray. Afraid you will murder me and leave me astray. The Fortune Teller's Curse. Can't lose this guy. Easier to scare off the bigger monsters. The fortune teller's curse. Harold was an old farmer. He had a big farm. He had a ranch. He had horses, stables, but his favorite horse was Bess. She was a sweet old old mare. That's what you call a female horse, right? Anyway, she was one of those female horses. She was very sweet, really easy to ride, very gentle, and almost every day he'd He'd take her out into the hills, and he'd ride her around, and then he'd, he'd do the rest of his chores that day. He loved that horse Bess out of all the horses that he had. Now, that farmer, Harold, he was a, he was a very centered man. He was a very logical thinker. You know, he, uh, he didn't give in to superstitions like a lot of his neighbors did. He believed that uh, this world is what you see, and that's about it. Let's let this guy have a rest. That was the way he approached life. But, you know, one day he went to the county fair and went there with his wife and his family, and they were <laughs> playing the games and walking around. And, and Harold, he came across a fortune teller's booth, a little tent right at the edge of the forest, at the edge of that fair. And he went in, it's all dark, and there's candles flickering in there. He could smell incense. It's all smoky inside. And he said, what, what the heck? Why not? Let's try it out. So he walked in, and he sat down at the ladies' table. She had her crystal ball there. She had her deck of tarot cards. And she started putting those cards down. She looked down at the cards, and then she looked up at Harold. And she said, your favorite horse will cause you to die. Now, Harold, he, he had never really put stock into fortune tellers or, or cards or any of that magic stuff, witchcraft. He didn't believe in it. But <laughs> if there was any way he could believe in it, even less, well, this, this lady's words, that, that made him even more skeptical. He said, you've got to be kidding me. My favorite, what, my favorite horse caused me to die? <laughs> it's got to be a joke. She's gentle as a lamb. She's the sweetest horse. She's never even, she's never bitten anybody. She's never snapped at another horse. And then he said, you of course, she can tell that I'm a farmer. She can see the way I'm dressed, my overalls. So she knows that I must have some favorite horse. She's guessing. He said, he said, how do you even know I have a favorite horse after all? The fortune teller, she said, well, her name is Bess, right? Oh, no, he, he, he kind of got the willies when she said that. And he said, well, well when, when? When is it going to happen? Bess caused me to die. How... She said, I don't know. I have no idea when. It could be a week from now. It could be a month. It could be years from now. I'm, I'm just telling you what I see here in the cards. I'm just doing my job. Which, by the way, you owe me my fee. <laughs> so then he said, okay, it's, it's all about money. This it doesn't mean anything. But he was uneasy. He was uneasy the rest of the day. It kind of ruined his day at the county fair for him. And he left the fair, went back with his family, and he was, you know, the next day for the first time in, he couldn't remember how long, he didn't ride Bess. And he didn't ride her the day after that either. In fact, he sent his sons out to, to go feed Bess. And finally, after a few days, he, he had to confess to his, 
his wife, he said, you know what? That fortune teller, her words, they got to me. I can't stop thinking about what she said. His wife said, well, it, it's best is your horse. You've had her for years, but it's, it's your decision. So he tried to get over it. He couldn't. Every night he would toss and turn and just imagine, what if she was right? And he thought, the only thing I can do is to get away from the possibility of that ever happening. So the next day he talked to a, a neighboring farmer who had always loved Bess, always asked if he was going to sell her. And he said, you know what? Uh, yeah, I'm ready to sell Bess. So he sold her to his neighbor, gave him a good price. And then he, he went to sleep much easier that night. And he even, he told his wife, he said, I, I feel so silly about this. I feel so ridiculous, but you know, I have some peace of mind now. As long as Bess is, is miles away at, at the neighbor's house. I mean, that fortune teller has to be wrong. Her words never can come true. But, you know, just in case, he kind of avoided the rest of his horses, too. And that farmer, he stopped riding horses, in fact. He let all of his children do all the feeding of the horses, and he, he didn't even go out to the stables where the horses were kept. And he wouldn't even ride. He just started walking everywhere he went, or he maybe a friend who had a wagon, but even that made him uneasy, just being behind horses. And it, re it turned into what you and I would call today a phobia. This farmer, he was just a, he was obsessive about this, staying away from horses. And he lived in fear for years after that. Now, I think it was about seven years later, he heard news from his neighbor. His neighbor came to visit, and his neighbor said, you know what, you remember best that, uh, that horse that you sold me? He said, yeah, I loved that horse. The neighbor said, well, I've got some sad news. I had to put her down last year. I had to put her down, you know. She she broke her leg, and she just couldn't walk anymore. And and it was sad. I thought I thought I should tell you. And uh, Harold, well, he he heard that, and it was sad. But at the same time, he kind of <laughs> he breathed a sigh of relief. Again, he felt like a whole weight had been taken off of his shoulders. And his neighbor said, "You know what, Harold? Would you like to come say goodbye? I've got her bones lying out in in the paddock, out at the far end of my field. You can." I never even buried them. If you want, you can you can go over and you can pay your respects. You can say goodbye to Bess. He said, yeah, yeah, I'd like to do that. So Harold went with the neighbor, and the neighbor pointed out that far corner of the field, and he walked over there. He saw those white bones. It had been a long time. It was just, just bones now. All the, all the flesh had rotted away. He saw those white horse bones lying there. He walked up. He kind of stood there stared down at her. He remembered all the good times he'd have with Bess, but but also he, he felt like he had dodged a bullet there. And so he he just wanted to say goodbye. He wanted to thank Bess for being a good, faithful horse. So he knelt down, and he reached out, and he just put his hand on that white, bleached by the sun, that skull, Bess's skull. And he put his hand on her skull, and he kind of he petted her snout like he used to when she was alive. And when he did that, a rattlesnake, a rattlesnake that had been living inside of that empty skull, sprang out through the eye hole, bit him on the hand, and Harold died that night. Now, some folks think that that story is just a, another dark story about how you can't avoid your destiny. And some folks think that it's fatalistic. But, you know, there's another way to understand it. Some other folks say that that story is it's just a reminder to us all that at some point, sooner or later, our time is going to come at some point. So living a life entirely of risk avoidance, entirely in fear, entirely avoiding what we love, avoiding riding horses or whatever that is. A life lived in fear is no kind of life at all. All of us need to find that balance between safety and security and between embracing life. And that's the meaning that I like to take from the story of Harold and Bess. 
I hope you've all enjoyed our night of creepy and spooky stories. Keep on checking in for future events here with the Storytellers of San Diego. Enjoy your October. Enjoy the season, however you like to. And uh, just remember that, uh, you know, there's a lot that's frightening out there, especially in these in these times that we're living in. And sometimes that's exactly wh why we need a good ghost story to remind us of the frightening things that uh, really are not that frightening at the end of the day. But uh, if you do go to bed tonight, and if something frightens you from these stories, if you take your shoes and stick your shoes underneath the bed pointing inwards, that's a surefire way to keep ghosts away from you, because ghosts cannot stand the smell of athlete's foot. I hope you've enjoyed these spooky stories. Signing off now, I'm David Schmidt, and uh, please feel free to put in the comments and thank all the rest of our storytellers tonight. We've heard stories tonight from Fred, Catherine, Mindy, and Marilyn, and myself. Happy Halloween. Choo-choo-choo-cha-cha-cha-cha. Choo-choo-choo-cha-cha-cha.